Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our new YouTube series, Spartans One on One with Ross Gordon. As today, you can see we have another very special guest. He is the head coach of Norfolk State University football in his fifth season at the helm. We welcome in the head coach, Latrell Scott. First of all, Coach Scott, welcome to our, to our program, and I'm excited to have you on for the first time. Well, thanks, Ross. Appreciate you having us. It's been, you know, been a long time since we've been able to interact. It's uh, you know, good to see you and be able to do this. Hey, Coach, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it was sort of weird because I was like, by now, we would have talked three or four times. We would have had media day. We would have had – man, we're at the end of the season, literally. Yeah. Like, we're having this we're having this conversation at the end of the season. Uh, homecoming has passed. It, it just feels different. Uh, first of all, I think that a lot of people don't understand that we're normal human beings. So that means that you, you're a husband, you're a father um, first. And I think in this, in this, uh, in this pandemic that we've seen, um, it's really cast a, a, a brighter light on the individual. Because I know that maybe it's been different for you interacting with young men and, and, and interacting with their parents because it, this situation has made everyone look at things, look at life differently. How, how, has, this, uh, how has this time really changed you? Well, you know, it, re it really forces you to think and kind of reevaluate your priorities. I know back in March, you know, when, when we started the situation, uh, I had never been at home and spent that much time around my family. Um, you know, obviously Chase is about to be seven and, you know, it's, it's given me the opportunity to, to do homework, do schoolwork, uh, you know, pick them up from school, you know, do some things that I've never had to do. Um, in terms of just being, you know, being able to be around the house on Saturday and uh, you know, watch football games, you know, watch other people make mistakes, you know, instead of us all the time. So it's, uh, you know, I can't say it's been fun, but uh, it, it's been different and and we've made the best of it. You know, we were able to get uh, our team here and spend some time together with them. You know, we, we did miss them because miss those guys because that's who we are, uh, you know, as a family. Um, you know, Chase hadn't seen our team since, you know, probably before spring break. And, uh, you know, so he's done a good job keeping up with the guys online. You know, he, he interrupts our meetings and stuff like that. But uh, it was definitely an adjustment for us all. Coach, I, I know we talk about it a lot, but I, you just mentioned it, and that was going to be my next uh, question. Um, this might be the first time as a collegiate football coach that you've been away from the game, period. Like, you're not having a contact in any kind of way for this long. How has that, how has that really just messed with you inside? I know for a football guy like you are, I know you you like to hear the, the the hitting of the pads. You like to you like to hear the whistles and and play to the whistle. Like like those certain sayings that you say, "Hey, stay up during practice." So you want to make sure that everybody stays healthy. You haven't said that in a long time. How how has that rang in your mind? Well, I, I actually have said it because even in the sessions that we're that, that we've had, guys are still falling down. So uh, being back on the field, you know, for the for the fifteen or sixteen sessions that we had uh, was definitely therapeutic. Uh, but but it's not the same. Um, you know, but but it really gave us a chance to to evaluate some guys and, and see some of the freshmen and just spend some of the time uh, with our guys this fall that we would have, that we would have spent with them during the summer. And uh, we we took a different approach. You know, we didn't put any pads on. Uh, there was no contact. There was a, there was a ton of uh, individual instruction. You know, some teamwork. But you know, we we think we came out of the situation better. And uh, you know, a you know we we kept our guys safe in terms of COVID and we we, we didn't have any any serious injuries. So. Uh, we're very fortunate, but it was it was different. You know, it was tough. Um, I, I I didn't watch college football for the first couple of weeks because I wasn't playing. You know, and then you know as the season wore on, I said, hey, you know, let, let, let's let's get back to doing what we do. But uh, you know, our staff's been great, our administration's been great, and uh, you know, everybody who's who's a part of our program is still a part of our program, and and uh, we're, we're fortunate and still hopeful that that we're going to have the opportunity to play in February. Coach, I know. Uh, also, we're talking about this time now. I know at this point in the season, you have evaluated over uh, over 100 hours worth of tape on guys that you want to come in. Um, this year, you're not getting that opportunity. What has been some of those uh, ways that you're looking at to try to revamp or try to just make uh, new ways in recruiting to get guys on campus or to get guys to see campus? Because that's really not happening right now. Well, it's, it's different. It's nothing that uh, we've ever experienced, but it, essentially it goes back to old school recruiting. Uh, you know, when I was being recruited and when I, when I initially got into the business, there weren't a ton of football camps. There weren't a ton of uh, unofficial visits. It was uh, evaluations that were done off of video and, uh, you know, there were phone calls that were being made. So um, a lot of the bells and whistles that, that are used in recruiting, you know, you, you can't use them right now. So it's kind of nuts and bolts. And, you know, really the biggest thing about recruiting this year is with the rules that they passed, 
Uh, we don't really know how big our class is going to be or if there will be a class because we've got so many talented players that we may want to bring back for another season. So there's a there, there's a balance in, in uh, you know, in, in staying current and recruiting, but not making promises that you can't fulfill. So it's it, it's been definitely different for us. Coach, uh, moving now to what we have, uh, we brought back a wealth of talent from last year. I know you're excited. Four out of five offensive starters on the offensive line are back. Uh, you get Juwan Carter back. You've added some talent in some spaces. Uh, you have both of your young running backs who came back from last year who were really, really solid in their first year. Uh, talk a little bit about what this uh, what this year was supposed to be like coming into coming into today and how it feels now that everybody's back on campus and you have done some individual work. Well, you know, I've never said this before, but I thought this was the most talented team that we've ever had. Uh, you know, I think the the guys uh, that, that were babies that were getting beat up on, you know, for the last couple of years that were making mistakes uh, down the stretch. I think, you know, those guys are 21 and 22 year, years old now. And, you know, I just <laughs> I selfishly wanted to get this group on the field to show people who we really are and, and what we've built, because uh, our staff done a tremendous job of assembling this group and our team has done a tremendous job of of developing. And we really, really wanted to get these guys uh, on the field and you know obviously our, our offense and our team is led by Pooty. Um, he's uh, I tell people all the time he's gone from a don't lose the game for a quarter you know don't lose the game quarterback to a you know manage the game quarterback to he can win games for us and uh, and he's done that and, and um, the opportunity to, to possibly play with him for two more seasons is great. Uh, when you get those guys back on the offensive line you know uh, KJ Kirby and Jalen Powell and Justin Red um, you know Tara Lipscomb I mean th those guys are as talented as a day as long they've been together for a long time they played together for a long time and as you're able to see our uh our rushing production picked up um, you know we've got a first team all conference tight end and Sean McFarlane but I think Ant Williams is just as good you know so we're, we're very fortunate to have two guys there that can play and when you look in the backfield um you know Kevin and Rabbit are the, the the two talented young guys you know that are home run hitters but we actually get Cameron Brent back who wasn't with us last year because of an injury so we've got uh, three good running backs that we feel good about, and those guys do a great job of managing each other and working together. Um, and, and that receiver, um, it's it's as talented group as we've had. Uh, you know, Justin's back, and after after having a really really good year, uh, DK James is back. I mean, DK had a really really good uh, good fall season. Uh, Tremaine Talbert is probably the one that uh, made the biggest steps. You know, from from freshman to sophomore. Uh, Daquan Felton's jumped in there and and uh, you know improved after after redshirting a year ago. Marky Ellington is is the glue. Uh, to the group and, and Vinny Jarvis has done a nice job, uh, you know, kind of coming along and, and being the guy that, that may be able to contribute. So we're, we're very excited about what we have offensively and, and uh, you know, we're, got, we're not going to change a ton in terms of what we do. We're just going to try to let our playmakers make the plays for us. Defensively uh, uh, along the same lines, uh, we did add a new defensive coordinator to a defense that got progressively better as the year went on uh, last year, started getting after the quarterback uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, you, you bring back some very, very talented young men, have to make some changes uh, in, in the back seven a little bit. You lose both of your safeties. Uh, you lose some talented linebackers and Nigel. Um, you have a guy in the NFL now. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot that you have to replace. Uh, talk a little bit about you on the defensive side of the football where there might be a little bit of a, of a slow start. Well, you know, we, we, we can't have a slow start. You know, I think uh, the, 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 the positive it has been that we've, we've had this time to spend together with these guys and, uh, and kind of implement some things and, and find out uh, some things about some guys. Uh, you know, Kermit Bugs has come in and done a tremendous job. He and Zach Tenuta have kind of uh, revamped our package and, and we made a promise to the kids that no matter what we did, we weren't going to change a whole lot in terms of scheme and terminology because we liked what we were doing. We felt like uh, we were playing very good defense at the end of the year, and it's a package that both of those guys have run. So we've we've had the, the coaches adjust the terminology instead of you know having the kids have to adjust to what we're doing. And you know, in terms of replacing those guys, I mean, you don't replace Bobby Price, you don't replace Nigel Chavis, you don't replace Nairi. Um, you know, Nigel's one of the, the best players, in my opinion, in the history of the school. Um, but you know, you got to go on without him. And uh, it, it shows the talent level that we've built to have a guy like Bobby playing in the NFL, and we're, we're proud of Bobby. But the great thing about all those guys, Ross, is they graduated. I mean, all those guys have a North State degree, and, and we're very proud of, of the things that they did here. But in the secondary, it, it's, been, it's been fun to watch those guys grow. Uh, we moved Stuart Anderson over to free safety, and uh, Stuart's making plays that, that are very reminiscent of, of some of the things that Bobby could do in terms of range and just you know being able to be a 6'2", 6'3", guy that can run and, and, and do some things. 
back there um, at corner. Uh, you know, we'll have Brandon Savage back, but Devin Coles has had a had a, an excellent fall uh, in terms of one on ones and seven on sevens. And you know, I think he might have led our team in interceptions last year, but Devin had a really really productive fall for us. Uh, Tank Lands come in and done a nice job for us, uh, transferring in from Liberty. And, and we've got a freshman from uh, Ocean Lakes, Devin Allen, that's came in and, and turned a lot of heads. You know, he, he's a guy that stands out for us in a time that if it was a regular training camp season, you might not have had to get the op- – you might not have gotten the opportunity to see him uh, progress and play. But, I mean, you know, he, he finished uh, training camp, you know, with, with the first group, which is, which is really good to see, you know, for a freshman. And just having this time where there's not a lot of stress and pressure on him, was really good. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're fortunate linebacker. Uh, Marquise Hall's been around with us. Um, and, you know, Matt Hodges has been here with us. So we've got guys that have played in games at linebacker. Uh, Tyler Long, a junior college transfer, has come in and, and you know, made a, made a really nice impression. So we're still kind of sorting it out there at linebacker, but there's there's a good number of bodies and a good, uh, you know, and a lot of competition there. Uh, up front, uh, with you know, with Deshaun Deshaun Dixon and and uh, Chris Myers, you you know possibly got two NFL guys right there uh, that can play multiple positions up and down the defensive line. And uh, you know, Remy is back, you know, for another year. Tavian Black will be back for her senior year. And you know, you got a couple other young guys up there that, that, that haven't played for us yet. So uh, for the first time ever, you know, we feel like we've got talent, but but we've also got some depth. Um, and it's it's taken us a while to build this. And like I said, I mean, I just. You know, I want to get these guys on the field, man, to show people, you know, uh, you know how hard these guys have worked and, and what we've been able to do to build our program. Coach, I think one big thing, and and I don't want to make it a nostalgic thing or anything crazy, but you've been here for five years, and I think a lot of people don't understand when when you want to make an imprint and when you want to when you're building a program, sometimes sometimes it's not going to be the overnight success. You have to bring in pieces to really put you where you need to be. And um, I think that if you're a Norfolk State fan, you can be pleased with what you've seen from the younger guys. But now that they've gotten older, uh, you can see what really your plan was and and what your staff was trying to do in building the program. Uh, you, you know, and, and I think sometimes you don't get appreciated for it. But, <laughs> but again, it is what you had to do. Talk a little bit about how fulfilling it feels now to see the work that you put in coming in day one uh, to, to right now. Well, you know, uh, I'm I'm, a, I'm an impatient person, you know, in, in terms of uh, having success. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate to have success everywhere we've been, and uh, this has been a it's been a humbling experience, but it's been an experience that I, I really appreciate. Um, you know, we've got a, a core group of Norfolk State fans and alumni and supporters that have been extremely supportive through this process. It's been tough. You know, there, there are games that that we should have won, and then we hadn't won, and you know, there 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 are times that uh, you know, we we haven't played as well as I thought we were capable of playing, but I really do believe that some, sometimes that's that's maturation and that's experience. And when you look at our guys now, and you know, we look like the other teams in the league physically. And, and, and you know, when, when we line up on the field, you know, we, we don't look like a like a lesser team. But it's it's been something that um, that we've been working towards. And I tell the guys, hey, you know, we're talented, we're better, but we still haven't won. And, uh, you know, I've got a I've got something posted in my office and something posted on my Twitter account. It says nobody cares about your story until you win. So it's, it's time for us to finally win. Coach, uh, I think one good thing that if nobody knows, and and I think that even in interviews, you look intense, like it, it doesn't stop. It, it doesn't stop. And, you know, and, and I and I and I like people, I like people to say, Ross, when they ask me, how's your relationship with Coach Scott? I said, man, you know, like, look, look, we had one intense conversation. And since then, it's been all good. I understand you, you understand me. But I don't think a lot of people really get like when they see the face and they see the scowl, that's just it's not me being upset. It's not Latrell Scott being frustrated. It's just Latrell Scott caring and how he goes about his business. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, you know it's probably just just who I am. You know, probably uh, you know something that I get you know from from my mom. Probably um, it's just uh, you know I try not to be business like all the time. And and I've really changed my approach, Ross, in in, in a lot of the way the ways that we we approach a lot of things. I think if you saw the way that our kids played in the last season because we, we, we decided to do some things different. We let those guys be kids and be young men and have fun. And I think it paid off. And I think if, if you're a smart coach, you learn and you listen to your players. And, uh, you know, I, I know the type of kid that Pootie is. So, you know, sometimes he frustrates me with his mannerisms, but that is who he is. But, you know, I, I know when he put, when he, when he buckles his chin strap, he's going to play. So uh, a lot of the man has just been me having to adjust and having to adapt 
and uh, you know, opening myself up to some situations and things that, that I may not may not have in the past. And you know, ho hopefully it'll it'll pay off for us. One of the things that you talked about was adapting to some new situations. Uh, football this year is going to look a lot different, especially when it comes to MEAC football play. Uh, we are split into divisions. We're sort of like in the Northern Division. Uh, it's going to be interesting because we're going to play. We're going to play everybody uh, a couple of times, and that's not normal. That's not a normal thing. Um, one, you get to watch everybody on film normally. You get to see them one time, so you can really you can really game plan once for a team. But now you have to do it twice. How difficult is that going to be? You know, it's something that we've had to research. You know, I've reached out to a couple of friends at the NFL. You know, because those guys are used to playing each other twice, and um, you know, even ask you know some some people on the basketball side, you know, what it's like to play a team twice. And uh, I, I think my initial thought process is, you know, you, you go out and do what you do, and uh, you stick to what works. And I think sometimes if you think too much about it and you try to reinvent the wheel for the second time that you're playing, you know, you could end up uh, taking some of your success away. But I think uh, the mental aspect of our team having to go out and compete against the same people twice, you know, based on the results can be tough. So we just got to keep these guys locked in and keep these guys focused. I, I don't care who we play, just as long as we get the opportunity to play. I'm just, uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Thomas and, uh, you know, uh, Reno Adito over the MEAC. And, you know, for, for our administration with, uh, you know, Dr. J and Ms. Webb, just, you know, trusting us and giving us the opportunity to play, you know, putting us in a situation where we've been able to keep our kids safe. And, and uh, you know, we, we our kids have been here. They've been safe. Uh, you know, coronavirus issues have been very minimal. And, and, and that's because of the way that Norfolk State has run our program. And they, they, they've put us in a situation to be able to, to, to have success in February. Coach, uh, a couple more questions, then we'll let you go. I think one big thing that, uh, that you mentioned earlier that we do you do have like a test pilot you you can see what other programs are doing now because there is some college football being played now you can see what other college programs are doing and sort of help uh build what we need to do for the spring how helpful has that been it's, it's been tremendous and uh you know I, I call my friends that are in the business you know one of the biggest questions i have right now is you know how do you travel you know i think we can manage our stuff at home because We've been at home the entire time, but just trying to figure out how people are traveling, what they're doing on the road, how, how, how they're feeding the kids and all those kinds of things. So a lot of that's different. So when you can pick up the phone and call somebody uh, who's been through it, because people have made mistakes. Uh, you know, uh, some, some of the ways that people operated in week one, they're not operating the same way right now. So it's, uh, it's great to have resources and the ability to reach out to some of these, these coaches that we know to get advice from them on how to do things the right way. Coach, and finally, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a difficult off season. But every day, every day that approaches, uh, the football season is coming. Uh, February is the day. February is the target date. What are some of the things that you want to see from your guys in, in their individual workouts and uh, everything else from class is almost done? Uh, Thanksgiving break is coming up really soon. What are some of the things that you want to see from your guys to prepare for February when practice starts? Well, yesterday was our last uh, on the field workout. Today is our last weight room workout because obviously we've got to shut down. Uh, for final exams, they start exams here uh, on the 19th, and uh, we're, we're sending our entire team home this week. We think uh, our guys, they've been here, they've done what we asked them to do, and, and you know, by, by Friday, all of our guys will be off campus, and they'll take, they'll take their uh, exams at home um, because we wanted to get them out of here. We wanted to keep them safe. We wanted to keep them in an environment to, to where there are less people around, but what we've, you know, encouraged them to do, and, and we're making sure that, hey, you guys have to continue to do the same things that you've been doing because we can't take a two month layoff and expect to show up January 8th, you know, ready to go. So, so we've got to trust our guys to, to do what they did prior to, prior to them getting here. Because one thing that I'm very pleased about, you know, is when our guys showed up in September, finally, they, they were in pretty good shape. You know, the, uh, the, the, the rust from throwing and catching and, and, and doing some of those things was there, but, but you could tell that our guys had tried to work and nobody came in here in, in just terrible shape. So, and, and that's the reason that we, you know, we don't have a ton of hamstrings and muscle pulls and all those things because our guys did the work on their own. We've got to continue to, uh, you know, we'll essentially go back for the next two months to doing what we did, you know, in the spring and summer when we couldn't see them. All right, Coach. Uh, I know, I know a lot of a lot's going to be put on the new strength and conditioning coordinator, who's uh, the strength and uh, strength and performance uh, coordinator, who's done an amazing job. Jonathan has done an amazing job. Uh, down there and also getting to your coaches and still getting their individual rooms to zoom has been uh working a lot for you you were the first one that really tested they <laughs> during spring so uh we know that you uh, kept your, your young men ready and uh, we're excited about what's going to happen uh coming up at the beginning of next semester thank you for joining us coach uh this is the first time and hopefully uh we can get it going a little bit more often i know you're excited i'm excited to get this done a little bit more often in football season 
Well, you know, the, the fun thing for me is that uh, basketball is up first, you know, so we told Rob and Larry, hey, you, you guys, you know, you guys get us out of the gate and get us going and, uh, and, and, and we'll bring up the rear. But we're, we're very excited about uh, all the teams that we have at Norfolk State, uh, you know, men's basketball, women's basketball being picked, you know, number one. And, you know, we're, we're sure volleyball is going to do well and, and, and the baseball teams at the track team. So uh, we've got a great group in our athletic department, man. And, and uh, I, I really do think this should be a great year for Norfolk State Athletics. Yeah, we hope. And I know a lot of people always say football, how football starts is how the rest of the season is going to go. Uh, rest of the year is going to go. And at least you get to pick up off somebody. See if that, see if that's really true. No question, man. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, <laughs> those guys lead the way and we'll bring up the rear. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach, for your time, man. I appreciate you. Spartans one-on-one -on -one with Coach uh, Latrell Scott and Ross Gordon. We thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.